Are you tired, honey? Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and how many plants did we do? Four. We did four cassava plants. Um, so this is what they look like. So you wanna, wanna explain what we're gonna be doing with the cassava? Well, we're gonna peel it. We're gonna be making some cassava fries out of some of these. Um, out of the bigger ones, we're going to grade and, and cook down and make cassava flour. It's uh, pretty much, it's cassava is what they make tapioca out of. So we'll use that cassava flour to thicken stews and stuff. It's like a cornstarch replacement. Yeah. And then here you have, now these are the stalks from when we pulled these up and these have roots on them. Right. So we're gonna replant these along the shed over here. And these are all oh, these, starts. Yeah, these are starts we're gonna put in pots. So, but over here, um, we wanna pull up these bananas because they don't get enough sunlight. And we're going to put the cassava here. They're, they don't get enough sunlight and they don't get enough water. What's going that on? Why? Oh, that's that new rooster. You see, we got a cassava here we need to dig up too. Well, I, well, do you really want to dig it up? We may just cut this. We could wait till next start. weekend. Remember, okay. we're going to be pulling more up because yeah. we have all this, all this in here still. We got, what, about another three or four trees to pull up? Oh, more than that. Yeah, so why don't we wait till next weekend? Because that bucket's full, honey. <laughs> okay. And, and we have to cook it today. Because that's the one thing that's bad about the cassava is you literally have to process it the same within day. Within the last couple, within, you know, within a few days. Yeah. And uh, we're... It's Sunday, so we don't have a few days. We got to do it today. Yep. So... That's why when you buy cassava in the grocery stores, mm -hmm. you have to really scrub it down really good because they coat it with wax mm -hmm. to keep it good. Yeah. I'm not coating all this with wax. No. We'll, we'll cook it today. We, we don't have anything else really going on. So, all right. So, here. Let you're me gonna take have to this over to the... Take it, put it by the front door, and then um, you're going to bring back the gorilla cart. Yep. Yeah. So, we pulled up a plant here one right there and then there was one back in here Donald pulled up but the rest of it all this other ones we're going to um, harvest next weekend it'd be different if we did this on a Saturday but and we kind of made headway here got my chickens and we started putting our cardboard back in here and the reason why we have the cardboard down is for suppressing the weeds and also creating compost a, uh, that will break down and go into the soil and we're creating more soil. But that's why you'll see this area littered with, uh, uh, with cardboard. Let's go ahead and dig this one up. Seriously? Just because I want to show the people what it looks what it like. looks like yeah. all right well we gotta be careful of the uh, line yep, because that one kind of grew it looks like it goes dang that that's gonna go right it's right under that line so you're gonna have to be careful honey yeah let me get oh yeah, pretty much this is what he does. He just pulls it. <clears throat> he man. Oh, good. Okay. You want to pull out that other tree? That's a invasive tree right there. Just toss it in the uh, compost area. I'll fix that. <laughs> but. 
So then what Donald does is we'll, he'll take his machete, cut off the tube, the tube, uh, tubulars, and that's the cassava part. And then he'll take, cut the branches off, and then that's what we replant. That's the cassava. All right. I'll let you do your thing. I'm gonna. So that's all we're. Yeah, I normally, when we cut these for planting, we're gonna, I usually have them about like this. Mm -hmm. But these guys are going in pots. So. And I'll show you here, because I want to plant some in the hole where I just dug this one up. Okay. And I'll how, show you how we plant those. How easy it is. This is a pretty one of these uh, plants that you can literally set it and forget it. Yeah, they thrive on neglect. They thrive on neglect, which is what we kind of purposely do around here. Because we're neglectful. No. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, you know... We're trying I, to do this to make our lives easier and not have more work for us. Yeah. That's all he does. Sit down. All right, we just pulled this out of here. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna lay this down here. <laughs> Now, why is the reason you lay them sideways? Because every one, if you lay them sideways, the root come will come out of here and then you'll get multiple shoot ups mm -hmm. and roots coming out of the bottom. So you get more cassava per plant if you lie them sideways. You can put them straight down like this mm -hmm. and they'll grow, but that's how I did it this, this last time. Yeah. And you saw this one did not have very many roots on them compared to, well, you didn't see the ones earlier that I, yeah, you when were I planted it sideways, <laughs> you had huge tubers coming from every direction. Oh, okay. So now when we do it in the pot, they're going to be planted uh, up and down. So that's all you do. You just that's all you do. cover it and that's it. Huh? Pretty much. Simple and, easy. And it'll grow. <laughs> All right. Good morning, food foresters. It is day three of processing the root stuff. So I didn't get a chance to film yesterday because I'm trying my hardest to get through everything. But the three things of two, or I mean ginger, that we dug up, I washed it, peeled it dehydrated it this is the ginger i put it in a little uh season jar but that's how much we got now uh for the turmeric we got a nice little uh i got sorry i got the dishwasher going it's still dark outside <laughs> um but uh the turmeric um washed it don't have to worry about peeling it but i sliced it all up into thin slices dehydrated it overnight and we got ourselves a nice little jar of turmeric now the cassava is a whole nother story cassava is a process we did a test run because i wanted to make sure i got i got it right because i only we only do this like once a year you know what in once a year, you harvest the tumor ginger and cassava, at least in our area. We did, I think it was six roots, and I got two quarts out of it. And I still have to process this whole bucket still. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you step-by-step step on how I do this to end up with 
the flour. All right, guys. So one of the things I want to tell you about turmeric too is it stains everything. My hands are still kind of yellow, especially this one, because this was the hand I used to hold everything. But with cassava, you have to remember there is cyanide in it. Now, because I do have cuts on my hands from um, one of the rabbits, she's pregnant and she's grumpy, she got me on my finger right here. I'm going to wear gloves. Yay, gloves. <laughs> the first setup you want to do is you're also going to need a good peeler for the cassava. You're going to need some type of bucket to hold the peelings because you don't want it going down your sink. And then I'm going to show you the other setup here. And then even though I have a garbage disposal, I got one of these um, just because with the cassava and the peelings and we have a septic system I take that I put everything into the compost bucket that comes out of here once it's rinsed off peeled I come over to this next station this is where I will cut off the ends cut off any bad parts cut it into chunks put it into this bowl got a nice knife nice and sharp then the next stage is you come over here. Um, I have the uh, slicer on Donald's mixer. Um, this does like the nice mandolin type uh, chip uh, cutter and it's gonna fall into this bowl. Now once this bowl is full, then that's when I go to my dehydrators and I have two of them, I have a when I got from Walmart, the um, Hamilton Beach five tray dehydrator, and then I have the Excalibur five drawer dehydrator. So we'll put everything into these, and then I got one dryer there, and I come over here, and there's my Excalibur. Um, when they go into the dehydrator, they go in there at 160, and between 160 and 165. Um, this one only goes up to 160. My Excalibur goes up to 165. So I put them on the highest setting and it's gonna be like 11 hours. So I'll start it up, let it run overnight more than likely. And then the next day, I will then do the dry processing. That is over there for a reason. I don't want it, any of it to get wet. I'm not going to worry about trying to um, wash it all because I'm going to be reusing it. But that's what we're going to go for today. More than likely, I'm only going to get maybe, depending on the size, I'm going to try and get these big ones done first. Um, but I'm probably only going to be able to get through maybe... I'm thinking six or seven of those. I'm still going to have another day to process these, uh, what's left over again. I'm just trying to get through as fast as I can. So now I will say this, as you know, um, cassava or yucca root, they can have, they, w they do have cyanide in them. But two things that I want to let everybody know if you're sensitive to strong smells when you start peeling processing this root and dehydrating it you will smell it so if you're one of those people that don't like um oops sorry don't like the strong smells you may want to do this um with your windows open so that in that way you can get the air circulation or turn your fans on if you have fans that you can run to help circulate the air in your house do that second the cyanide in this is low but it's enough to where it can harm humans and pets once you boil it dehydrate it 
or some people put it in cold water, ice cold water for 45 minutes. Nah, I'd rather boil it off. The cyanide does, once the plant is either boiled or dry, it disappears. It goes away. You, you take care of it. So after dehydrating, you won't get that strong smell and it'll be safe to consume. I'm extra cautious because we do have four cats, two dogs, so I make sure that um, I try my best to minimize anything that falls on the floor before I get to the dehydrator process. That way I don't have to worry about an animal accidentally eating it because I have two dogs that will eat anything off the floor. It annoys the crap out of me. <laughs> But I just wanted to let you guys know on a side note, so you're prepared, you know, you're not, you know, nobody really talks about the smell during the processing and everything, but it does smell, it, it does. So let me finish this route and then I'll show you guys what I do on the next station. Wanted to show you, you wanna peel it until you get to the white part and you can see it's kind of got two layers but it's the white part you want okay I only did a little bit just to, to show you guys because I still have all that to do but I cut them into chunks and then I'm going to put them into the slicer here let me get this uh, filled up. Alrighty, got it filled up. Put that, that's how push down. I'm gonna put it on two. Coming out as little chips. So be quick to dehydrate it since it does have a high moisture contact. That's just two. So what I'm gonna do is, because there are some small pieces, this is gonna be my bottom tray. I have the extra mesh on here, just so it'll catch everything. Now with my Excalibur, it's already a small mesh holes, unlike these that have the large grade. But I'll fill up the trays a decent amount. And um, let me see here, which ones there is my top, okay. And then as I'm going, I'll stack them up and then I'll show you that. All right, almost filled. I'm gonna go ahead and process another one. Get it in here and then get this onto my dehydrator and start dehydrating. And then it'll probably be tomorrow because this takes about 11 hours. And I'm sure by the time it gets done tonight, I'm probably going to be too tired to do it. But, um, more than likely tomorrow, I will show you how I process it from the dehydrator into flour. All right, day, the next day. This is round number two I'm still doing. And where I left off, I'll be processing these later today, the last of it. But... What you want to do is make sure these are dehydrated and crispy. I don't know if you guys can hear the snaps. I use paper towels for the fine little bits that fall down because then I can take the paper towels and dump it into here. You want a blender, one preferably or with a stick because when it starts to grind, and I'll show that, um, you need to swish it around. This is dusty and messy. <laughs> then over here, you want a sifter and something to sift in. Um, any of the leftover bits that are too big, I take and I will place back in the blender to go for the next round. Now this blender will hold about two, two trays normally, 
So I'm going to go ahead and just get this loaded up and then show you the next thing. All right. So I got a full. Got the hole in the top so I can put this in here. So it'll go in like that. And then you want to have this kind of ready because when this starts to turn to powder, you want to put the cap on this to keep the powder from coming out. Um, this particular blender, I'm not sure where we got it from, but it's um, Hung Geek. And I normally put it on the ice crusher setting that runs at about two minutes. You don't have to go to two minutes, but you want to look for that nice powder consistency. what it should look like. I'm going to take this and use a strainer. A little bit on the bottom. I just normally tap it. that over there and now you're gonna sift it and pretty much that's all you do All right, now what I mean by tiny little pieces, not sure if, see, that won't go through the sifter. So all I do is put them back in for the next round. All right, I'm gonna get this going and then we're gonna get it canned. Let's can it. Um, what I normally do first is I will kind of scoop it in a little bit. That way, it's not going to come out off out of a out of the pan in one big clump. Woo! I can't talk this morning. I think I need more coffee. It's been a long two days, and I still got a lot to do. And you just want to make sure when you're doing this process that everything is dry. And sometimes when you pull the cassava out of your dehydrator, if you notice that there's areas where it's clumped together and it's not dry and crispy, like it's still moist or wet or damp, put it back in the dehydrator and let it go some more. Um, with my Excalibur, I have to turn the trays because it seems like um, halfway through the drying process the um, the uh, cassava that's near the front isn't drying as fast as the ones near the back so I'll just take the trays out and turn them all right let's see if I can do this 
Already made a mess mess. Wow. This one tray is going to do this whole jar. Wow. It was filled up to here. There we go. I'll make us have a flower. Now, let's put the lid on it. And uh, I have a uh, label maker, so that way, we know what it is. And cassava like this will store up to two years. Now, if you notice that uh, it's clumpy or it starts growing mold anywhere in here, you want to throw it away, obviously. Especially if it doesn't dry all the way and you didn't notice it then you definitely want to, uh, you know, get rid of it. You don't want to use it. So that would be my only thing to tell you. So far, I've never had that problem. Um, this cassava ran for almost 24 hours drying. Um, and that's just because I was busy yesterday. So add number three. And I still got another dehydrator full. I'm gonna go ahead and process that. And then I have to process the rest of the bucket again. So I'll be running the dehydrators again today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get that all done. So it'll be probably be another day or two. And then I will show you guys how many jars of cassava we got out of four plants. That's four plants we dug up. And we still got a lot more out there. <laughs> I am completely done. Now I have to clean up. But uh, the last little bit gave me um, almost a half a jar or roughly a half a jar. Yeah, I'd say about a half, just almost a half a jar. So we got out of the four plants that we dug up, we got four and a half jars of cassava flour. And that is the entire process from start to finish.